Okay, uh, you guys remember from uh, yesterday that we did a problem uh, like example four, and what we needed to do is we needed to find the slope. Now, I'm just going to write this down to refresh your memory in case you watch it or anybody watching the video. We do have a few people, people gone right now. We said that uh, the slope is equal to f prime of a, which we've now defined to be exactly the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And so yesterday what we did is we uh, plugged in our 1 plus h into x. We used the binomial expansion in order to come up with the coefficients. Uh, we wrote the equation for the line tangent. But let's look at it just slightly differently. It says given the function h of x is equal to 9 to the x. Well, that's much more difficult. Approximate the slope of the line tangent at 0, 1. So I know that in order to find slope at a single point on a function, what I have to do is I, I have to continue to use this. It could be f prime of a, which is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now, what is my a value in this problem? Zero. Okay. And f of a is, is one. So what I have is <clears throat> the limit is h approaches zero of nine to the, what is a? So just h. Good job, Greta. Uh, we have 9 to the x, so we plug in 0 plus h, which is just h. Minus 1 all over h. Now, we don't have a nice algebraic way of simplifying this. That's why it says approximate. But this is really going to check to see your understanding. A for the day. What is h represent delta state so andrew says andrew says delta what do, what do you mean by delta it's the distance between the two points what do we want to push that distance towards very 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 no you're right we want to push the two points together but so the distance between the two points, that's what h is. And we want that to be very small, very close to zero. So we just want to approach zero. So what would be a good number I could plug in for h? Sure. Let's do this. It is approximately, not exactly, it's approximately... We will go 9 to the 0 0.001, we'll go to the 1,000th, minus 1 divided by 0 0.001. So this is just an example where we don't really have a nice arithmetic way of figuring that out. And so we are going to use an approximation. Now, you will learn later on how to find the derivative of 9 to the x. I'm, you, you'll know how to do that. But for right now, <laughs> 9 to the 0 0.001 minus 1. And then we will divide that by 0 0.001. And we get 2.199. So what would you approximate the slope to be? 2.2? Any question how I calculated that? If it says approximate, choose an h value very small. Last year's calculus class struggled with that idea. They couldn't get over what to do with that. You just go ahead. No, you asked a question because you have something in your mind right now. I chose it because it's very small. You could have chose uh, 0 0.001 or 0 0.00001. I always plug in a very small number. A number like 5 would be 
Not a good number to pick. No. If we plugged in 5, 9 to the 5th minus 1 divided by 5, you can see we're not even close. You are going to become very close to 2.2. And if you want to check, you could use your table, set that as a function in your calculator, and use your table values to generate all the numbers you want to. Uh, generally speaking, but, you know, close is a relative term. Technically, we would need to go to our table and approach it uh, very close. Okay. Yeah, we're just finishing these two problems. Shh. So, uh, boys and girls, we're just going to finish example six and example seven, and we are done. Okay? That's it. A particle is moving along a straight line with the equation S is equal to F of T, where S is the position in meters and T is the time in seconds. Find the velocity of the particle. Sorry. At times, t equals negative 4, 1, and 3. Given the function has position, s equals 5t squared minus t minus 3. Here is something, here's something that you need to uh, uh, start to commit to memory here. Boys, boys. The position function is your first function. It tells me s, where I'm at at a given time. So s is equal to 5t squared minus t minus 3. Now I'm going to say something very profound here, and you need to understand it. The derivative of position with respect to time is simply velocity or speed. So here's the idea. If you want to be able to figure out your rate of change or your velocity, all you have to do is take the derivative of the position function. Remember, derivatives are about rates of change, how something changes with respect to something else. So as you're driving your car, uh, your miles are changing with respect to miles per hour. So your, your miles are changing with respect to time. And so, same thing is happening here. If you want a rate, we need to find the derivative, which is going to be our velocity function. So the first thing I need to do is I need to come up with a velocity function. It wants me to find the velocity at all these times, as opposed to choosing an a value of negative 4 or 1 or 3. I'm going to write a very general velocity function and then plug my points in. Watch. We will say that f prime of t, that's my variable right now, right? Is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, I plug in a plus h for t, correct? So I have 5 times a plus h quantity squared minus parentheses, a plus h, minus 3, minus f of a. So minus parentheses, what? What is f of a going to be? This thing, except what do I have put? Five, yeah, I just plug in a. 5a squared minus 5, or minus a. Minus 3. All over H. So after we set it up, now it's all algebra from here. We have the limit is H approaches 0 of what will be my first term? 5A squared plus 10AH plus 5a squared minus a minus h minus 3. 
Oh, sorry, H squared. Sorry, 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 sorry. Minus A, minus H, minus 3, minus 5A squared, plus A, plus 3. Boys, boys. All over H. What cancels? 5A squareds go away. A's go away. The threes go away. Everything that doesn't have an H ends up canceling. That's what should always happen. Can I now divide off an H? I can, so I have the limit as H goes to zero of 10AH. What? I'm sorry, I'm going to divide off my H. I'll, we'll just, we're running out of room, so I'll just do that step. I'll 10A plus 5H minus 1. Can I now plug in 0 for H? And what do you get? So the velocity is equal to 10A minus 1. That's my velocity function. I can take any time I want to and find out the velocity by simply plugging in my A value right here. Hold on. Yep, plugged in zero for H, that went away. Taylor, question. Oh, okay, all right. So now we just plug them in. So I would say velocity at time negative four is equal to what? Negative 41. Velocity at time one is equal to nine. And velocity at time three is equal to 29. Does that make sense? Does anybody have a question on that? I think that that is the most important question of this lesson, that you guys would understand that. That's what I want you to come away with. Okay, then the, the very last example then. Let's understand uh, grammatically what derivative means. It says the temperature of a pot of water is modeled by the function C equals F of M. So this is just some function, okay? Uh, C is uh, the temperature in Celsius, and it's a function of M. That will be minutes. So C is uh, degrees in Celsius, and M is time in minutes. Now, I, I just want you guys to think about this, okay? Sometimes it's helpful to think about the problem. I boiled uh, some noodles last night, okay? So I got out my big pot of water. Right now, as I have you know all my stuff in there, and I'm you know I've, it's it's heating up underneath. What do you think is going to happen to the temperature of my water over time? It's going to increase. Now, is there a point where the temperature will decrease? Yeah, after I shut it off and I you know I I drain out all the water and I just have the noodles in there, or whatever. Or maybe I maybe I'm going to reduce it to simmer. There's all sorts of things, but. The, the idea is that the temperature of the pot of water is changing, okay? So it says, explain what F prime of M means. And remember, our definition of a derivative is the change of Y with respect to change in X. So, what does F mean? What are we calculating? What is... But in in the problem, I'm sorry. What is that? What is the output of this function? What are we? What temperature? So all this means is the rate of change of the temperature that's all that means. That's the F prime part. With respect to, and this is where I use the M part. What is, what is, with respect to M minutes or re, with respect to time. So that's what F prime of M means. If we're finding the derivative of that function, uh, it's, 
the rate of change of the temperature with respect to that identifies my variable as, as time. Or if you said minutes, that will be fine as well. There's a few ways to explain this. You are asked on your test to make sure that you can accurately explain this piece. So you're going to have a few questions like that. Explain in simple terms what f prime of 5 equals 10 means. So the temperature... Is it if I uh, if I get 10 is the temperature increasing or is the temperature decreasing? It's increasing. It's increasing at a rate of 10 degrees per minute. The temperature is increasing at a rate of 10 degrees per minute. At what time? Af after it's been boiling for five minutes. So again, uh, the derivative means we have a, a rate. And the uh, domain value tells us specifically the time that it's happening or the position that it's happening, but that's what we want to want to look at. So, you know, it's going to take a couple tries to get some of these as you try to word it out, but uh, we'll do our best. Any questions on that? Okay, you're going to have some uh, nice time to work here. And uh, let me stop the video or pause the video and uh, I'll bring up your homework. As you guys look at your assignment, it's page 132. And uh, you have problem 3, 5 through 7, 9 through 17, odd 25, and 28 through 30. Uh, 28 through 30 are basically like example number 7. Uh, problem 25 is going to be like example 6. And, you know, it kind of backs up from there just to let you know. I want you to know this. 17 is difficult. Well, I don't want to question your guys' math abilities, but I'm going to... I want you to know right now, if, if you can't get 17, don't waste too much time on it. The rest of those problems you should be able to get. But 17 is, is challenging. So if you're ready for a challenge, look at that one. So, All right.